Church was a big part of my life growing up. It was actually one of the first places where I got to perform and it, it was something that I loved and God was always someone who was a part of my life. But as I grew older, there was this knowing that God was there and was always there, but there wasn't an intimacy. And I, I remember different parts of my life searching for that, sometimes in the wrong places, but searching for him. I was dealing with a lot of pain from past decisions, from my parents separating, from mistakes that I'd made, and just life, and not being where I wanted to be, and knowing that there was more for me and my family. But it wasn't until I was in Los Angeles, I started just being hungrier and hungrier for his presence and his word. I remember being in a place that I wasn't happy with myself or where I was. And I, I remember starting a Bible study. It started in a house and man, I just re remember hearing God's voice in a way I'd never heard before and not knowing that there could be such great intimacy and that I could truly lay everything I was carrying upon him. And it was the most freeing, beautiful, powerful. To this day, it's, it's what I cherish, cherish the most is my relationship with him. I honestly, for whatever reason, never was someone who had visions of my wedding um, even as a child I just it wasn't on my mind and I remember starting to desire companionship but there was a moment where I was growing in my walk and I remember there was this big deal that was happening in my career that I just knew was going to change it was going to change everything we were finalizing this big contract and there was one night where I had a, in my heart, couldn't even say it out loud because I felt ungrateful saying it out loud, but in my heart, I, was, I saw this vision of my husband and a little girl and I was like, God, I thought they would be there. And I kind of, I had this desire that seemed to come from nowhere <laughs> and I pushed it out of the way and got back to focusing on this deal. And when I tell you, after that moment, it's almost like everything slowed down with the deal. And months later, in walks my husband. <laughs> Jamila and I met on set. Uh, I actually remember the first day I, I met her, but I was the assistant director and she was an actress in the, in the film. And so she couldn't find the location. So I remember walking out to the street and seeing her uh, from afar, I'm like, oh man, Jamila, I knew her from her from her work on uh, from first, and I was like, ah, dope. I get to I get to work with uh, with Jamila Biggs. This is this is great. And we were both in d different worlds, um, you know, and and focused on our work, not looking at each other at all, honestly. And it wasn't until maybe a year and a half or so later, I was crewing for a project that I was cre had created, and. All my goatee ADs were booked and something, he came to my mind. I reached out to a mutual friend of ours who is also a producer and just, you know, checked on, on to see if he could vouch for, for Brandon, because <laughs> I didn't know Brandon. And they said how amazing he was. I had just taken a, taken a trip and gotten back and got an email from, from her um, looking for an assistant director. And at that time I wasn't, I wasn't trying to assistant direct anymore. It was time for me to direct. You know, I was done with assistant directing uh, until I got that that email. So I sat down with uh, Jamila and Desmond. We talked about the project and, you know, I, I heard what they had to say and I said what I had to say and, and decided, hey, you know what? Let's do it. I'll do it. This will be the last one. We worked together uh, 
for about a month and we were very focused on on the work i know my eyes weren't open yet and i don't think his were, were either what i did notice about him was how he was such a wonderful leader. He led with so much love, but firmness and confidence. I was really impressed by the way he led and the way he supported my vision and the other creator's vision for the project. It wasn't really until the end where, you know, I'm like, oh man, this, to me, this is cool. You know, and, and like the scales or the, 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 you know, the veil kind of fell. And I was like, oh, wow, Jamil is dope. So at the end of the shoot, we were, it was actually getting close to uh, my birthday. And, and I tell you, leading up to this time, there was this feeling and this longing to go to church or get back to, to going to church. Of course, we grow, we grow up going to church with your parents and whatnot. But when I grew up and <laughs> moved to Chicago, I wasn't doing any of that. So I remember Jamila inviting me to church. It was February 2nd, 2017. She invited me to uh, Revelation Church. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll go. Myself and the DP of the project were supposed to go hang out with him for his birthday. We were gonna go eat that day before his birthday. God put on my heart to invite him to church. And I was like, God, I can't do that. <laughs> we hadn't even talked about our faith or anything, you know? And so I did. And so he came to church. We saw our first time hanging out outside of work. He was going to church together. And then the next day we met for his birthday to go eat. And turns out our DP, William Novi, <laughs> was not there. Um, he, he got caught up doing something else. So it was just me and him. <laughs> it was just Brandon and I. We spent the whole day together. We talked from morning to tonight. And it was uh, it was amazing, it was such an amazing time getting to know her and, and that's that's really when I was like, ah, I, feel, I think I'm feeling something here. And I knew she was feeling something too because of uh, how she would look at me. <laughs> Fast forward to a few weeks later, it was her birthday and we took a trip to the Grand Canyon. I was producing another project and at the time I was like, I cannot, I don't have time. <laughs> Uh, to celebrate my birthday this year, it was a, it was a headache. The project was a headache, and I just felt like it was too much on my plate. But he made me celebrate it. I had told him about a cross country trip I went on with my dad, and how beautiful the Grand Canyon was. And he was like, "We should go," and so we did. <laughs> what was supposed to be maybe five six hour trip ended up being about ten. <laughs> we drove and, drove and drove and drove and talked and talked and talked and had the best time that was a road trip so far it's amazing <laughs> it's been a lot of fun got to the canyon and you know i was like wow it's beautiful but it looks different and he was like it's a canyon it's it's big it's it's cool it's a great big canyon and a photographer came up to us was just talking to us and said hey you know in this beautiful ha have you been to and just started naming this these different places and he's like what about the grand canyon have you been there and we both were too shamed to admit that we thought we was at the grand canyon turns out we were at horseshoe bend so somehow in the midst of all our talking we drove past the grand canyon and made it to horseshoe bend so remember the time we were uh Gonna go to <laughs> the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And up to the moment that we got what we thought. to the canyon, we thought we were at the Grand Canyon. This is pretty great. This is great. But from that day on, <laughs> we were just inseparable. We were together ever since. Um, within that, also, um, Brandon's mother fell ill and battled cancer. And it really brought us together in a way that we didn't expect. Every time I talk about it, it's, it's like it was a master class. You know, God was giving me the, 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 a, a master class in Him. Uh, so shortly after Jamila and I, uh, yeah, became uh, official is when, you know, my mom started feeling, feeling sick and, you know, strange things started, started happening and she would talk about these headaches she would, she would have. Come to find out, you know, she had brain cancer, it was a glioblastoma. And 
it was a really, really, really tough, uh, tough time. Thinking back now, it just seems like, I mean, it happened so fast, but it felt like years were going by, but it was literally just a few months. During that time, there was a lot of surrendering that needed to happen. There was forgiveness that happened. Even, you know, with my dad, you know, before my mom passed away, I, God just said, you need to forgive your dad. I remember, you know, having conversations with my mom as a kid to, to that point, like, you know, you need to forgive your dad. And I didn't know what forgiveness looked like. Yeah, I could say, yeah, I forgive you, but still having that, you know, having whatever feelings or whatever uh, I was holding on to still present, that's not true forgiveness. So during that time, I was just talking to God and God was like, okay, now it's time. And, and when I forgave my dad, uh, there was like this weight that was lifted off of off of my shoulders. I think God was just using this time to build me, build my relationship with him and and really, you know, complete the relationship at uh, the time with uh, my mom. It was tough, but it was beautiful at the same time. And I think what God did, he took a lot of the uh, that the, the pain that a lot of people go through when when they you know someone passes away even a parent passes away he took that from me and uh truly replaced it with with joy i remember um being in the room the day the morning you know my mom passed away my sisters and brother-in-law had gone home to rest and and it was me and jamila my aunt and uh, my mom's pastor in the in the room and you know i just remember we were in there praying and I was looking out the window, and I was praying, just talking to God, and I heard this this voice like, you know, just tell everybody to leave. I was like, what? This is weird. No. <laughs> and, you know, a few minutes goes by, and I'm like, oh, like, oh man, tell everybody to leave. I'm like, what the heck? So I told everybody to leave. It was, it was just me and my mom, and, and uh, what came to mind was the song uh, that my mom used to sing to me and my sisters when we were when we were little, and I didn't remember all the words, but I tried to you know sing it the best that I could, <laughs> and literally within five minutes she was gone, and I, I remember walking out of the room, and as I walked out, my sisters and, and John, my, my brother-in-law, were there, and they were like, oh, did did it happen? Did she pass? And I'm like, yeah, but. There was so much joy that I had in that time. But the great thing, you know, I remember actually she passed on a Thursday. We and, and at the time church was only on Thursday. And so I went to church. After church I went home and turned on the TV. And I, I was just asking God, God, just give me a sign that that my mom is with you, that she's okay. And so the TV's on. Uh, and it goes to commercial, and the first commercial that plays, whatever the commercial was, but the song that plays in the commercial was the same song that I had sang to my mom in the morning as she was passing away, but it had the rest of the words that I couldn't remember. After that, I turned off the TV and went to sleep. Following th that time, I saw him grow so much um, in his walk with God and his faith, and even in the passing of his mother, saw him really just hold on to God in a way that was just beautiful and grow in a way that was beautiful.